Tom, hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Great, we, we hear you great. We yeah. Okay, I'm uh, super happy uh, to be uh, here. Uh, unfortunately, not physically, but uh, maybe next year. And what I want to do, and I only have uh, unfortunately uh, about uh, 20 25 uh, minutes, and I want to rush you through some of the things I see today. So, my name is Tom Haak. To prove it, I took my photograph. So, this is me, and uh, I'm the, the, the leader of the HR Trend Institute. And at the HR Trend Institute, we watch trends in the domain of people and organization. Um, I start with my last slide. Uh, if you want more after I've spoken, link to me on LinkedIn. Go to the website of the HR Trend Institute, hrtrendinstitute.com, or visit my YouTube channel. And there's a lot more there than I can talk to you about today. So what I want to do, and I want to talk a little bit about the main organizational issues. I want to talk about important HR enablers, as we, we call them, and then I will cover some of the important uh, trends and then I'm open to any of your questions. It always starts with the question, what are our big organizational issues, business issues, organizational issues? And it's surprising, but in, in many uh, HR organizations where I come, uh, well, uh, if you ask them, what are your top of mind burning issues? The answers are not often so clear. And of course, you know best. But if I go around organizations these days, I hear a couple of things. High on the list is productivity. Productivity. You could also say, how do we survive? Many organizations, small organizations, big organizations are in survival mode. And it's the question, how can we make sure we continue to do our things in the best possible way? How do we continue to earn some money? So productivity, high on the list. Connected to that is issue number two, innovation. The markets are changing, the circumstances are changing. How can we offer new services? How can we renew ourselves in such a way that we are surviving? Number two. Number three, you could call resilience. Uh, in German, elasticiteit. I don't know, I did it in Germany as well last week. Resilience. I don't know whether you know the book by uh, uh, Taleb. I can recommend it to you. Uh, Nicolas uh, Taleb, Anti-Fragile. Super book, uh, already a couple of years old, but very actual today. Taleb is also famous for his book, The Black Swan. But anti-fragile, as Taleb said, anti-fragile is may maybe even better than resilience because resilience is how do you bounce back? Anti-fragility is how do you bounce back at a higher level? How do you benefit from crisis situations? Very important, and many organizations are asking today, how do we as organizations become more resilient? How do we make sure our people are more resilient? And um, number four on, on the topics, and I heard the former sp speaker uh, talk about it. I didn't know what he was saying, but it's about well-being, high on the list. It is physical well-being. Are our people, are our clients, are our suppliers safe, but also do they feel okay? Uh, 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 do, they do they feel valued, etc. So well-being, high on the list. And of course, there are many other issues you know better. So, how do we deal with those important uh, 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 organizational issues? One is let's make sure that we have the right HR enablers in place. And I will mention a couple. 
Number one, you could say it is a little bit strange to mention it under enablers, but in the end, it's about clients. Whether you're a public organization, whether you're a private organization, but in the end, we do it for our clients. And so also from an HR perspective, it's very important to be very close to the clients. What keeps our clients awake? What do they want? And again, what I sometimes notice is that the distance between HR and the clients, let's put the clients there, can be big. How many HR professionals are in direct contact with clients? So enable number one. Number two, open door, but I will mention it anyway, is analytics. Use rigorously people analytics, uh, uh, measure, 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 uh, and work evidence based. And what, what I put there, I also put there analytics for the people, because one important question you should always ask when working with people analytics is what is in it for the people? What is in it for the employees? And that question is often forgotten. And organizations measure a lot, they do a lot of things, but what are the benefits for the employees? And many employees, when they leave an organization, for example, well, they cannot take their data uh, while it is probably value data for them. Number three, I'm sure it's also discussed these days in your conference, eh, is work in an agile way. The combination of agile working with design thinking. It's an important enabler. It's also important for HR to be very, you could say, fluent in working agile. Number four is psychology. Uh, I'm a psychologist, I'm an industrial psychologist, so I'm preaching for my own domain. But there are many psychological laws, you could say. There's a lot of sci uh, 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 yeah, scientific research we could use a lot more in organizations. And it's not done enough. It's very important to take that into account. Uh, also, these days, we see that organizations and governments, they don't have a clue about psychology. In my country, and I'm Dutch, that's, that's why I wear the orange shirt uh, today. In, in my country, the government is continuously saying, broadcasting on television, people keep one and a half meter distance, stay away from other people. They think that by, 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 by repeating that message continuously and telling the people what to do, that people will do it. Well, if, if they would have studied psychology a little bit, they know that there, there are obedient people, but there are also people that say, well, you know, if the, if the government says things, I might not do them. And, and what is the purpose of a, 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 a meter and a half, etc., etc. So taking psychology into account, super, super important. And people in the top, top row, can, can you raise your hand if you can follow me uh, good? Yeah, okay, thank you, super, because then I know at least, I cannot see, I can only see the back of your heads, which, which uh, uh, is difficult, <laughs> which is difficult for me. Number five on my list is continuous listening. I, I, my drawing here is an ear, not, not super drawing, but continuous listening is one of those other enablers. Uh, not only by surveying people, but using all kinds of data, uh, uh, combining the data to get a sense of what are important issues with employees in the organization. Continuous listening. So I talked about important business issue. I talked about what are some of the key enablers, and now I will rush into the trends I see at the moment. Trend number one on my list, and those of you who follow me a little bit know that, it's about personalization. Personalization. Personalization is, are you willing and able to take the individual needs, wishes, and preference of people into account? In the HR domain, that generally is not so easy. We can learn there from marketing. And my local supermarket, uh, Albert Heijn, 
they are called, and they do a lot of effort to try to find out how I, as an individual consumer, behave and how they can tailor their offering to me. In organizations, the roots of HR were often in one size fits all and not personalization. Most organizations have gone away from one size fits all to segments, nothing wrong with segments, as long as they are data-driven, evidence-based. I see many organizations using segments and the question is, is there real evidence that those segments uh, uh, have certain characteristics? Uh, obvious example uh, you hear a lot these days is about, let's say, the millennials. Eh? And there are people who say, if, if you tell me your date of birth, I can predict your behavior. And I can tell you that's not true. If you know someone's date of birth, you cannot say anything or hardly anything about the expected behavior of those people. So beware of that. Uh, most of the things you hear about millennials, well, there's not a lot of evidence. So work uh, 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 personalization. I will give a couple of examples. I apologize for my uh, drawing. This is uh, a police man, uh, probably an American one. Look, if you look at the head, this is a policeman. And in this police force, the police force wear has wearables like this one. So I'm policeman Tom. I'm on my way to a crime scene to assist in the crime scene. And I get a bus from my watch saying, Tom, you are too agitated. You are too agitated to be effective. So stop. Often the only that feedback is enough because I know, oh yeah, I have to relax. I count to 10 and then I enter the situation or I ask a colleague to help me. So this is, you could say, in the flow of work, helping people to do their work better. The second example is a, a nurse. Uh, in, in German, a Krankenschwester. You see the nurse, my own drawing. Uh, this nurse, now I'm nurse Tom. I'm on my way to assist in an operation. Let's say a gallbladder operation. This is my uh, uh, phone and my, my diary knows where I'm going. So it said Tom will assist in a gallbladder operation at 9 a.m. Then I'm asked a couple of questions. I do a little test. If I pass the test, good luck. If I don't, if I have a couple of questions, then I get a small video, micro learning. I get a small video with the essentials of that operation. And then I go into the operation. So this is, again, micro learning and learning in the flow of work and personalization because it's really tailored to me. Second trend, I mentioned personalization. The second one is speed. Everything goes faster, faster, faster. I don't have to tell you that, but uh, if you look in the HR domain again, it tends to be relatively slow and we have to speed up. The third area has to do with fun. It's about the employee experience, uh, the employee experience or the, the learning experience or any the talent experience. Let's give people good experiences. And that's what people expect these days. And well, the reality is if you look at many organizations and you ask people, how do you value your experience? The ratings generally are average. People say, oh, okay, it, it's okay. Huh? It's okay. Well, is that enough? Trend number four is let's be kind. Let's be kind. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, also you could say that's an enormous open door. We know that we have to be kind, but again, in the HR domain, there was a tendency that HR said more, we are tough. Let's be kind. And if, if that's one of the values high in the organization, a lot of things go a lot easier. I already mentioned learning in the flow of work. I gave you a couple of examples, enormous important trend. How can we get close to the actual work that people are doing? Measure what they are doing and then give them learning solutions, often micro learning solutions they can need. Well, if you look at most learning practices today, they are still old fashioned. 
many, many of them are still classroom based. Even online, I see a lot of, you could say more or less classroom training, one size fits all, not personalized and, and actually not in the flow of work. Um, number seven, and I am conscious of, is nudging. Nudging, I, I, I probably you've heard the terminology, but nudging is, is a, how can we gently invite people to show certain behavior? And I will give you a couple of examples. Uh, one is from the book, it's an older book, but I can recommend that as well from Laszlo Bock. He's an old uh, Google man, Work Rules. And there's a nice nudging example in this book. It's about the, the restaurants in Google. And th uh, this is our plates, eh? a big plate and a small plate. And what they did in, in the restaurants, in half the restaurants, half the restaurants, they made the plates smaller. So what they wanted, we want people to eat less. Eh? So half the restaurants, smaller plates, half the restaurants, normal plates. And what they found out, that when you give people smaller plates, they eat less. Well, and it's, it's super obvious, but this is nudging. Instead of saying to people, eat less, eat less, eat less, and they don't do it, you just change the plates, make them smaller, and uh, uh, there you go. Another example of, of, of nudging is what I see a lot in offices these days. This is a desk in an office, and this is the carpet around the desk. What I see, I see two variants. One is in offices policing. So there are signs everywhere, don't go here, walk that direction, you're not allowed to do this and this and this. In other offices, they cleverly redesigned the offices. Uh, as in my example, uh, they said, well, let's put the desks on a dark carpet so that when people go close to the desk, well, they, they, they don't stand on the, on the dark carpet, naturally. So that's nudging, inviting people to show certain behavior. I've uh, 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 reached the end of my time already. I uh, apologize for that. There's a lot more to say, as I said, if you uh, want more, go to the website of hrtrendinstitute.com, go to YouTube. Uh, my, my main messages were always start with your main organizational issues. Don't start with the trends, start with the main organizational uh, uh, issues. There are many trends you could use to tackle those issues but also make sure your key enablers are in place, like continuous measurement, like working in an agile way. I wish you uh, success uh, uh, in the conference. I hope I can answer a couple of questions and I hope to see you live next year. Take care. Сцена, действительно, надеюсь, и на вашу речь. Многие люди придут в следующем году. Это действительно вопросы, что настолько было понятно и четко, то спасибо. И хотела бы вас спросить, как выглядит ситуация в Амстердаме? Открытые рестораны? Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question because I hear a Russian speaking. So uh, I only hear the Russian. So maybe if the translator cannot speak, then I can hear your question. Thank you. So how is the situation in Amsterdam? Restaurants are open? Yeah, the situation is uh, complicated, I must say, because uh, yes, the restaurants are open, uh, uh, we are allowed on the streets, but at the same time, uh, the number of uh, people affected by COVID is going up again. So uh, we are uh, more or less officially in this, what they call the second wave. So uh, 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 there's an anxiety uh, 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 and, and we'll see what, what happens. Uh, but uh, there are quite some people, uh, especially young people who say, well, yeah, I'm fed up. I'm fed up and, and we do what we want to do, but that's causing new infections of COVID. So, uh, uh, a little bit uh, stressed the uh, situation. Tom, and one 
last question from me. What is your favorite uh, HR trend? Your own, which, which? Yeah, my, my, my favorite trend, and that's why, why I put it on number one on my list, but it, it's about personalization because personalization is so important and it's so difficult. And we also see it re referring to COVID, uh, that, that uh, there's a tendency also in governments uh, to, to, in crisis situation, immediately revert to once everybody should do this. For example, also in organizations, everybody should work from home. But that's not working. There are people who cannot work well from home. It has to do with their personality, it has to do with their work situation, it has to do with their home situation. So you have to look at those elements. What is the personality? What is the home situation? What is the act? And then tailor the work situation to those individual elements. So some people, yes, uh, they can work very well from home, but for other people you have to create other facilities. Maybe not in the office, maybe in small hubs. But person, so if you go that route, you you can be a lot more effective. But I see, a, yeah, pe people find it difficult to do so. But uh, I hope that that many of you are able to do something with personalization. That's my number one trend. And I know how it's complicated to talk with your computer and not to see the reaction of the whole yeah. people. And I I understand. And thank you for the way you presented. It was amazing. As always, by the way. Thank you, Tom. And your the gift from us is waiting for you. So hope Super. to see you. <laughs> okay. Success. Bye bye.